Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. It's Cash. I'm so glad to have you guys here to partake in a new video. And today I want to be talking about what I've learned from being plant based in the last four years. It's been an amazing journey. It's been a lot of things that my body has gone through, my mind has gone through, and even from a spiritual standpoint of just how detoxing the body can shift a lot of different areas in your life. So I'm glad to have you here and partake in this journey of storytelling. And we're going to jump right into this video with all this great news and information. So before we get into today's video, I want to say thank you for being here. First and foremost, my name is Cash, aka Cash Got Wings. And if you like the content that I've been posting on my channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button. The videos you've already seen, smash that like button, run up the comments. I love all that energy. So let's just get right into today's video and keep everything rolling. So over the last few months, I've been getting a lot of questions about what my diet was like while I was plant-based. Why did I decide to go plant-based? And today I wanna to take the time to just answer those questions and provide information for you. Me specifically, my main reason of going plant-based was from an athletic standpoint, having the goal to reduce inflammation so I could stay more physically fit and active in the gym when I decided to, to work out. And I can definitively say that being plant-based helped me accomplish that, which I was really excited about because all throughout my physical activity and fitness journey of whether playing basketball, cross country, or track and field, I've always experienced what is called delayed onset muscle soreness. After the first two weeks of experiencing a plant-based diet and continuing to lift weights, I didn't experience any of that lactic buildup in my muscles. Um, lactic acid, for most people who are unfamiliar with that, is the tension that you feel in your muscle after an intense workout. And so at that moment right there, that's when I knew, okay, this is something that I could see myself continuing doing because it was super beneficial. Less time spent on recovery, more time staying active in the gym. That's what we all want when you're looking from a physical aspect of health and wellness. Being plant-based for four years, there's been a lot of information over this time frame. There's been a lot of different ways to go about having a plant-based diet and just a lot of education around this talking point as far as this specific genre of food intake. There's a lot of different diets out there from keto, pescatarian, you know, you have a uh, vegan, raw vegan, American diet, Mediterranean diet. You know, there's a lot of different areas where you're going to fall within. And coming from an American diet, which was high in calories, high in saturated fats and sugars, also sodium, you know, going into that plant based diet, it was pretty much night and day from my experience because I'm starting to give myself more fruits and vegetables to help alkaline my body. And the best thing about that is that an alkaline body or alkaline environment eliminates the potential threats of disease to thrive in. And that's one thing that we all strive for to keep our internal system clean as possible so we can spend more time actually enjoying life instead of trying to survive <laughs> against our own bodies because of what we intake basically. So once I understood where I came from and where I'm headed, you know, there's a huge part where you have to unlearn bad habits and start learning new habits that are actually gonna benefit you. So every time I would look at food, whether it's like fruits and vegetables, I would ask myself, what is the benefit? And the consistency that I would always come across is that these foods are high in antioxidants. They contain anti-inflammatory compounds, which really is the main thing that I was seeking because I hate feeling like sore. I hate having inflamed ankles and knees after playing basketball. Those are things that just really bothered me because I wanted to have a life of longevity of staying active. Um, I love being outdoors. I love, you know, hiking, swimming, uh, sports, lifting weights. You know, those things require healthy joints, a healthy heart, healthy blood pressure in your body to be able to sustain this long term. And so just reading into that gave me more motivation and more discipline to stay committed to that lifestyle. So in the beginning, I would say understanding the difference between plant based and vegetarian was a little bit challenging because when we look at plant based, we're we're really locked in on foods that come from the ground basically that is produced from the earth you, you plant a seed in return you receive produce now that's significant in understanding because when you look at foods that 
don't have any meat or dairy compounds within them. That gives you room to say that pasta could fall under plant-based. That gives you room to say like chips could fall under plant-based. That gives you room to say like certain cookies fall under plant-based because there's no meat, there's no dairy products within the makeup of that specific food. And if you want to say that's your definition of plant-based, then so be it. I get it. Like there's no meat, there's no eggs, there's no dairy. And that, and if that works for you, that works for you. But from the perspective of someone who's looking to make significant changes in their lives, they're coming over to a plant-based diet to eliminate some of the habits that they had previously. And that's why I want to stress the significance of eating foods that come from the ground. You know, your root vegetables, your herbs, uh, your fruits, and just foods that are very satiating to the taste palate that provide tons of enjoyment and just allows your body to thrive naturally without depending on any other sources to just feel alive when you eat these types of foods. So if you're someone new into this journey of attempting a plant-based lifestyle, you gotta have some leniency on your body because it's a huge adjustment period for some people. Now for my specific journey, it wasn't as challenging. The biggest challenge for me was just finding foods that I enjoy the most. I didn't have any issues with the whole detoxification of eliminating foods from my diet, but some people will. Some people have a hard time in taking an abundant amount of fiber now. Uh, sometimes beans can be a little bit challenging for people who are new to the lifestyle, as well as there's just the whole elimination of meat and dairy. You know, your digestive system is going to ramp up uh, pretty drastically. And so you're going to have to get used to that as well. And more than anything, the cravings, the cravings might be the hardest thing to overcome. So there requires a lot of discipline and commitment to that. You know, you have to remember why you wanted to do this journey. And it could be as simple as saying like, hey, I just wanted to go plant based for two days out of the week. Or maybe you're going five days plant based and the weekends, you know, you just kind of like let go. But for those who want to do this 24 seven on a weekly basis, you know, remember your why. Remember those cravings are only temporarily. And that's something that's easily to overcome as you continue to show yourself discipline and staying committed to the lifestyle. So if we look at where we are now in 2022, even amidst all the chaos in the world, I remember back in 2016, 2017, finding vegan options in the stores was pretty challenging. It was pretty challenging to find vegan cheese, um, plant-based milk, you know, whether it was soy, almond, coconut, oat, you know, it was not that common to see those things. And you were pretty much going to specialty stores to locate those specific items. Now you can go into whether you're Whole Foods, Kroger's, Randall's, Safeway, farmer's markets. There's a ton of plant-based options that's available for you. So when you get into the point of like meal prepping and having your kitchen organized so where you can get in there and not have to spend an abundant amount of time in prepping food, because just to be honest, plant-based foods can take some time, whether you're roasting or cutting food, you know, that's a delicacy where it can take up some time in the kitchen. But the best thing that we look at in today's timeline is that the abundance of food options is there and available and you don't have to look at look at this from a scarcity mindset. With that being stated, some of the foods that I prefer, I'm big on, you know, sweet potatoes, I'm big on avocados, rice, beans, quinoa, oat milk, almond milk, any type of fruits. I love fruits. Fruits is kind of like my favorite go-to when I was on a plant-based diet and also just making smoothies to start off my mornings. That was pretty much my go-to when I would start off in the morning, just because it's something easy on the digestive system. You can get a lot of nutritional value from that. And one thing that I would do is often add like a plant-based protein powder in there. So I would use Sun Warriors, Lean Meal, 
or Sun Warriors, you know, active protein if I knew I was going to the gym that day. But more than anything, you just have to be creative with your diet. For example, you know, if you if you were big on tacos, instead of using beef, maybe you just substitute the beef for beans. Instead of uh, getting dairy milk, you have, like I said before, oat milk, you have soy milk, almond milk. Instead of pulled pork, try jackfruit. Jackfruit is a great alternative and has a great taste and texture if you want to go for like a barbecue style vegan option. Um, that one won't let you down for sure. That's one of my favorites. Instead of cream cheese, you have cashew cheese. That's something to think about. You know, the last thing that I will mention is instead of chicken wings, you know, look at cauliflower wings. That's something that I enjoy as well and has a great taste also. So we, we've talked about produce. We've talked about our adjustment period. We talked about, you know, plant-based is not vegetarian. The next thing that in my experience that I really had to take into heart and just process is that cold pressed juice is better than store-bought juice. And when you look into the store-bought juices, you know, you have your pasteurized juices. There is some pressed juices that's in the store, but there's, there's nothing like having it made fresh in home. You know how long it's been sitting. You know, you have your own expiration date for how long this juice is going to last. And you're getting a lot of nutritional value. You're getting a lot of vitamins. You're getting the highest juice yield possible based upon the juicer that you're using in your home. It's super essential to have your own juicer because for one, you know what's inside of it. Unlike pasteurized juices, your cold pressed juice is gonna keep the juice in its natural state and that's what you want because that's where you're going to receive all the live enzymes that do an amazing benefit to your gut health, your skin, your hair. There's a lot of just beneficial, especially when you start getting creative with the different types of juices you can make. As of yesterday, I made a watermelon, pineapple, and lime juice that was really just hydrating. It's been really hot down here in Texas, so it's just super hydrating for the body. Um, just a lot of nutritional benefits into juicing. Another thing with cold press juicing that you don't have to worry about is, you know, in store, you're going to have to deal with the factors of added preservatives, artificial flavors, additional sugars that's been added. So in regards to like sodas or, you know, like those Minute Maid drinks, you know, look at the sugar intake on those. Sometimes you'll see 26 grams, 42 grams of sugar. And we all know that sugar after a while, like our body doesn't know what to do with an excessive amount of sugar, which eventually contributes to us having stored fat around our waist or wherever your body decides to store that fat. And it just really makes it challenging in the long term to burn that off. So with an excessive amount of sugar, sodium, fats, you know, this is something that can lead to insulin resistance. That's something that we all need to monitor and stay aware of so we don't put ourselves in complicated health issues. And the last thing that I want to say about eating a plant based diet is that eating more plants has always been a good thing. Whether you prefer to keep meat on your plate, eggs on your plate or dairy, eating plants is a good thing plants provide us with fiber to help our digestive system you know i think experimenting with your eating habits is a good thing to see how your body responds and reacts to these diets i'm a firm believer that all body types can benefit from adding more plants onto their plate i'm also aware that there's some people who may have food allergies that makes it a little bit more challenging for them to participate or accomplish a plant-based diet and that's where you have to know yourself what your body is capable of. Maybe you need to go on to a spot diet where you eliminate everything from your diet and slowly start including foods one by one so you can see how your body reacts. And therefore you can be very specific and detailed of what you can and can't do when it comes to your nutritional intake. So with that being stated, everyone's experience is gonna be different. Feel free to experiment, feel free to try things. The only way you're going to know if you like something is if you're willing to try, take risk, see if this works for you or not. And there's always something to be learned, whether this has been a positive experience or it hasn't been so warm welcoming on the other hand. If you're watching this video at this point and you're thinking about going plant based, I do have some video recommendations that may inspire you to continue with your journey or just start the journey today. These documentaries can be a little bit graphic at times. I will say the easiest one to start off with is Game Changers. I feel like you can watch that video 
that documentary with anybody and the educational aspect and information that they provide will be well received. Then you have Seaspiracy, which goes a little bit more into the graphic side of the sea industry, which is highly educational and informative because if you don't know about these things, you don't know to take them serious. And then the last thing that I would mention is What the Health. So these are three documentaries that I would recommend to anybody considering to go plant-based, considering to take this lifestyle seriously, whether it's for two weeks, whether it's for three months, you know, you set your own timeline journey for how long you want to do this. I do believe that at minimum two weeks is the starting point where you notice the changes, where you can actually see the changes and feel the changes yourself. That's where I would start. But if that is too challenging, just start whether it was, you know, the weekend you go plant-based. In time, you'll build that up into maybe you go one week plant-based and reset, and then two weeks, then you reset. So that's something to think about and to take in consideration. We all have to remember that the first time we try anything, it won't be our best attempt, but it's through your commitment and discipline where you see the best results that you desire. So I want you to take that to heart because sometimes we can be a little bit hard on ourselves because we don't see life going the way we believe it should be. We're not seeing the results in the way that we believe it to be. This is not gonna be an easy thing to do. This is going to be challenging. You're gonna to have to show yourself that you want this more than the traditional fast food option. You're gonna to to show yourself you want this more than the traditional American diet and make the change for yourself and your story will inspire the next person to start their story. So if you made it to this part of the video, I hope you leave a like, leave some comments below. Um, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel. I miss you guys a lot. I uh, haven't, haven't posted in a month or so, but you know, we're back firing this thing back up. And uh, I thank you all for, you know, just your support, watching the channel, uh, your kind words, your perspective, your opinions, because I look at all these comments and you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And it gives me a worldview of how everyone sees the content that I make and the content that thrives and resonates with you all today. So you all be blessed out there. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. You already know. Let's get it.